Hi there, I'm John McAdams, founder of the Big Game Hunting blog. And in this video, I'm going to do a detailed comparison of the 458 Winchester Magnum and the 458 Lot cartridges. Now, most hunters and shooters looking for a big bore rifle for use on a Cape Buffalo hunt in Africa or maybe a brown bear hunt in Alaska probably have at least a passing familiarity with the 458 Winchester Magnum and the 458 Lot cartridges. Now, while the 458 Lot has an excellent reputation as a proven big game stopper, many hunters these days are skeptical of the capabilities of the 458 Winchester Magnum for hunting thick skinned, dangerous game. Now, unfortunately, there are a few genuine misunderstandings regarding the capabilities of the 458 Win Mag. Additionally, the cartridge also has a somewhat checkered history. Both of these issues complicate the discussion, and for that reason, it is easy to understand how many hunters get confused about the real-world strengths and weaknesses of these two cartridges, specifically for hunting dangerous game. In this video, I'm going to do a detailed comparison of the 458 Win Mag and the 458 Lot and discuss the pros and cons of each one so you can make an informed decision on which one will work best for you. Now, as we get started, I think it makes sense to talk a little about the history of these cartridges and the events that spurred their creation. Now, the British Empire controlled large chunks of Africa as well as India in the late 1800s and early 1900s. Since those places were inhabited by large, tough, and dangerous creatures like Cape Buffalo, lion, tiger, and elephant, the British firearms industry manufactured a variety of heavy-hitting big-bore rifles specifically for hunters in Africa and India. Double rifles chambered in the various Nitro Express cartridges like the 450 Nitro Express, 470 Nitro Express, 500 Nitro Express, and 577 Nitro Express were extremely popular for many years with hunters in the British Empire. The development of the legendary German Mauser 98 bolt-action rifle and subsequent introduction of the 9.3 by 62 millimeter Mauser cartridge in 1905 spurred the British to develop their own bolt-action rifles as well as cartridges like the 375 Holland & Holland Magnum, the 404 Jeffrey, the 416 Rigby, and the 425 Wesley Richards. Just as their name suggests, British gun manufacturers like Holland & Holland, Wesley Richards, John Rigby and & Company, and W.J. Jeffrey & Company produced the majority of rifles used by British hunters in Africa and India. At the same time, Kynock, which was also a British company, was the source of virtually all the ammunition for those various cartridges. The situation dramatically changed after World War II primarily due to two factors lack of ammunition for many of the traditional big bore rifle cartridges, and the influx of large numbers of American hunters going on safari. We'll talk about the ammunition issue first. Profit margins on big bore rifles and ammunition were never very large. Ammunition companies can make a tidy profit on cartridges like the 6.5 Creedmoor, which were initially developed for competitive shooters, where a small number of shooters each individually shoot large amounts of ammunition, as well as cartridges like the 7mm Mauser and 30 6 Springfield used by the general hunting community, where large numbers of hunters each shoot small amounts of ammunition individually. However, big bore rifle cartridges like the 404 Jeffrey and 470 Nitro Express are used by a relatively small niche in the hunting community who do not usually shoot large amounts of ammo each year. So this reason, combined with the general turmoil of World War II and the decolonization of Africa and India in subsequent decades, resulted in Kynock ceasing ammunition production for many of those cartridges in the years following the war. At the same time, the demographics of hunters visiting Africa changed dramatically. Escaping the devastation most European countries suffered, the post-World War II era instead issued in a time of incredible wealth and prosperity for the United States. While some American hunters, like former President Theodore Roosevelt, did travel to Africa in the late 1800s and early 1900s, that trickle increased to a flood in the 1950s. This surge in the popularity of African hunting safaris among American hunters was helped along by writers like Jack O'Connor and Robert Rourke, though they were far from the only ones. Rourke's first safari in 1951 with legendary professional hunter Harry Selby was immortalized in the 1953 book Horn of the Hunter, which remains a classic to this day. 
Outdoor Life footed the bill for O'Connor's first safari in 1953, and the stories of his exploits on that hunt and his subsequent trips to Africa filled magazine pages as well as the dreams of many American hunters over the next two decades. Aside from the aforementioned British cartridges and the German 9.3 by 62 millimeter Mauser, there weren't many options for American hunters to use on thick-skinned, dangerous game like buffalo and elephant, though. Roy Weatherby rolled out his 375 and 378 Weatherby Magnum cartridges in 1944 and 1953, respectively. However, certain parts of Africa mandated the use of a 40 caliber cartridge or larger for dangerous game at the time, thus limiting the utility of those Weatherby cartridges. This all created a unique confluence of events whereby large numbers of American hunters were itching to hunt in Africa, but there were limited supplies of firearms and ammunition suitable for use on game like buffalo and elephant. There was also a strong desire among these hunters to use an American-designed rifle and cartridge. With all of those things in mind, Winchester sensed an immense opportunity and stepped in to fill that void with the cartridge we now know as the 458 Winchester Magnum in 1956. Initially offered in the famous Winchester Model 70 bolt-action rifle, the 458 Win Mag changed the safari hunting world forever. Winchester built the 458 Winchester Magnum using a modified 375 h and case that was necked up to use .458 inch bullets and shortened from 2.85 inches down to 2.5 inches long. The designers at Winchester opted for those shortened cases so that the cartridge would fit in a standard length rifle action, which is the same as the 30 6 instead of a longer magnum length action required by the original 375 H&H cartridge. Using the old 450 Nitro Express cartridge as a benchmark, Winchester advertised that the new 458 Win Mag cartridge can shoot a 510 grain bullet at 2,150 feet per second for a whopping 5,234 foot pounds of muzzle energy. The 450 Nitro was a proven performer on the largest and toughest species of dangerous game, and it had an excellent reputation among hunters in Africa. Well, Winchester developed a new cartridge they claimed that could meet and even slightly exceed that performance, but it was also available in a reasonably priced and widely available bolt-action rifle that was also familiar to most American hunters. Not surprisingly, the 458 Win Mag was a tremendous commercial success from the very start. Not only did untold numbers of American hunters journey to Africa armed with Model 70 rifles chambered in the new cartridge, but many African professional hunters and game rangers began using the cartridge as well. Unfortunately, it did not take long for reports of poor performance on part of the 458 Winchester on Dangerous Game in Africa to start circulating through the hunting community. Specifically, some hunters experienced squib loads with extremely low muzzle velocities that resulted in woeful penetration and abysmal terminal performance. Velocities around 1,800 feet per second were not uncommon in these cases, and there are even some documented instances of velocities as low as 600 feet per second. To make matters worse, some of these horror stories about subpar performance on part of the 458 Win Mag involved hunters getting injured or even killed by wounded game. When they investigated the situation, the folks at Winchester found several different factors at play. First off, there were instances of clumped powder failing to burn properly and therefore failing to produce the desired velocities. Prolonged exposure to high temperatures common in many parts of Africa potentially contributed to these powder clumping issues. Certain manufacturers resorted to gluing bullets in place, which also likely contributed to those problems as well. Well, why did the ammunition companies need to glue their bullets in place? To put it simply, the 458 Winchester Magnum lacked the case capacity to achieve the desired performance level with the powder available at the time. Building a cartridge that could fit in a standard length action and reach 2,150 feet per second with a 510 grain bullet was an ambitious goal for the mid-1950s. After all, the 450 Nitro Express used a 3.25 inch case and Winchester tried to cram that same level of performance into a 2.5 inch long case. So while the 458 Win Mag came close to achieving that goal, it still fell a little short. Now additionally, considering Winchester developed their ballistic data for the cartridge using a 26-inch barrel, while 22 and 24-inch barrel lengths are much more common on dangerous game hunting rifles, 
it's also doubtful that the real world performance of the cartridge for hunters actually out in the field at the time ever actually reached Winchester's advertised specifications. With those failures staring them in the face, the ballisticians at Winchester quickly took steps to correct the issues with the 458 Win Mag. They changed the powder used in the cartridge and revised their performance standards for the cartridge downward to a 500 grain bullet at 2,040 feet per second out of a 24 inch barrel. Those slightly more modest ballistic standards did not use as much powder and those smaller powder loads took up less space in the cartridge case. This removed the need to glue bullets in place and, in combination with the fact that Winchester began using a different type of powder, it eliminated the problems with squib loads virtually overnight. A 500 grain 458 caliber bullet at 2,040 feet per second is still an extremely potent load and it is quite effective on the whole range of thick skin dangerous game in Africa. Some hunters, like Phil Macero, also recommend dropping down to a 480 grain bullet with the 458 Win Mag. That smaller bullet takes up less space and it requires less powder to reach velocities in the 2,100 to 2,200 foot per second range. Thus, using that lighter weight bullet virtually eliminates any case capacity issues with the cartridge as well. That bullet still has a relatively high sectional density, which we'll discuss more in detail shortly, and a 480 grain bullet at 2,200 feet per second produces in excess of 5,100 foot-pounds of energy. That is also an extremely effective load on dangerous game, and no buffalo will be able to tell the difference between a 500 grain bullet at 2,000 feet per second and a 480 grain bullet at 2,200 feet per second. Additionally, advances in powder technology in the last 50 years have enabled some companies, like Hornady, to produce 458 Win Mag ammo that actually achieves the original performance objectives of the cartridge under real world conditions. Bullet technology has also improved by leaps and bounds since the 1950s as well. So make no mistake, modern 458 Win Mag factory and hand loads are absolutely deadly on game like buffalo and elephant in the right hands, and there's no reason whatsoever to doubt their reliability. Even so, those horror stories gave Winchester and their new cartridge a black eye, and the 458 Win Mag has never quite been able to completely shake off the bad reputation it received in those early years. Not surprisingly, hunters during the 1950s and 1960s started to look for alternatives to the 458 Win Mag. Indeed, a hunter and gun rider named Jack Lott was injured by a Cape Buffalo during a hunt in Mozambique in 1959. Lott was using a 458 Win Mag on that hunt, and he was convinced that the cartridge was not up to the task. As a result, he decided to develop a new and more powerful cartridge that would be perfect for Cape Buffalo hunting and correct the shortcomings of the 458 Winchester Magnum. Jack Lott unveiled the fruits of his labor in 1971 as the 458 Lott. Also developed using a necked up 375 h and case, the 458 Lott is very similar to the 458 Win Mag, but the primary difference is the 458 Lott uses a 0.3 inch longer case, so it's 2.8 inches long versus 2.5 inches long. The 458 lot is therefore too long to fit in a standard length rifle action, but it also has considerably more case capacity. For that reason, a 500 grain bullet at 2,300 feet per second or 5,873 foot-pounds of energy is a pretty standard load for the 458 lot. That larger case capacity also means that it can essentially duplicate the original performance specifications for the 458 Win Mag. The cartridge has no trouble pushing a 500 grain bullet at 2,150 feet per second with ample space remaining in the case, so there's no need to compress the powder charge or to glue bullets in place. Additionally, 458 lot rifles have the added bonus of being able to safely fire the shorter length and lower pressure 458 Winchester Magnum ammunition. Okay, so now that we've talked about the history of those cartridges, let's dive into the details about how they're alike and how they're different. So since they're both descended from the 375 H&H Magnum, the two cartridges have a similar straight tapered case. Both cartridges also use the same .458 inch diameter bullet in both headspace off the belt. However, the 458 lot has a longer case length, once again of 2.8 versus 2.5 inches, and a longer overall length of 3.6 inches versus 3.34 inches. Not surprisingly, the 458 lot also has about 10 to 15% more case capacity than the 458 Win Mag. 
That said, the 458 Win Mag is designed to fit in a standard length rifle action, while the longer .458 lot requires the use of a magnum action. The 458 lot is also loaded to a slightly higher pressure than the 458 Winchester Magnum of 62,500 PSI versus 60,000 PSI. Those differences in the external dimensions of the 458 Winchester Magnum and the 458 lot do translate into some interesting differences in their ballistic performance, though. If you compare modern factory ammunition for each cartridge, the 458 lot basically shoots the same weight bullet about 100 to 200 feet per second faster. Now, it is extremely unusual to take an initial shot at a Cape Buffalo at ranges in excess of 100 yards. Now, even with that additional 100 to 200 feet per second of velocity, there's virtually no difference in trajectory of the 458 lot and the 458 wind mag out to about 100 to 150 yards. Now, I will cover bullet momentum later in this episode, but the 458 lot loads do have a noticeable advantage in kinetic energy when compared to the 458 Winchester Magnum. For instance, Hornady manufactures a 458 lot load pushing a 500 grain DGX bullet at 2,300 feet per second that has nearly as much energy remaining at 100 yards as a 458 Win Mag load using the reduced standard of a 500 grain bullet at 2,050 feet per second has at the muzzle. Now we'll discuss how much that kinetic energy advantage means in practical terms in a minute, but first we cannot ignore the price paid for that additional energy which is recoil. Both the 458 lot and the 458 Winchester Magnum have a pretty stout recoil. As the saying goes, they hit hard at both ends. However, that 458 lot load has about 15% more recoil than a typical 500 grain load from the 458 Win Mag. As a point of comparison, that particular 458 load I just discussed has approximately four times the free recoil energy as a typical 30-06 load. For this reason, many hunters download their 458 lot load to shoot a 500 grain bullet at around 2,150 feet per second. That load is roughly comparable to 458 Win Mag ammo, and it's still extremely effective on dangerous game, but it doesn't have quite as much recoil as full power 458 lot ammo, though. Now, some people can handle that recoil, but many people can't. Now, regardless of which cartridge and specific load you decide to hunt with, it is clear that recoil is a major consideration you should keep in mind. Now, a properly fitted stock with a recoil pad will tame felt recoil to a certain extent. Now, additionally, I used a 9.38 pound rifle to calculate those recoil figures, which is for an unloaded CZ550 American Safari Magnum without a scope. So adding a scope, sling, etc. will all increase the weight of the rifle and dampen recoil to a certain extent. Heck, those cartridges are big and heavy enough that the weight added by fully loading the rifle magazine will also work to reduce recoil energy by a measurable amount. For instance, I weighed a few loaded 458 Win Mag and 458 lot cartridges I have on hand, and I determined that adding five cartridges to the magazine would increase rifle weight by 8 to 10 ounces. That alone will reduce free recoil energy by about 5% for the 458 lot in this particular case. Now, that's not a tremendous difference, but it's also not nothing either. Now, that benefit would obviously be most apparent for the first shot, but that's also the one that usually matters most in the real world. A muzzle brake will also help, but make sure you wear ear protection while hunting if you go down that route. Now, the muzzle blast from those cartridges when using a brake can be vicious, especially for anybody standing off to either side, like your pH and or a tracker. For that reason, many outfitters discourage clients from using a muzzle brake. Honestly, if you can't accurately shoot your dangerous game rifle without a muzzle brake, it's probably a good idea to step down to something less powerful that you can handle the recoil of without a brake. Now let's talk about some additional areas we need to discuss as it relates to ballistics, bullet weight, and sectional density. Both cartridges use the same .458 caliber bullets, so there's no difference in frontal surface area, also known as cross-sectional area, with the 458 Win Mag and the 458 lot. However, the 458 lot is generally better suited to using heavier bullets. While the cartridge is capable of using 325 to 550 grain bullets, the majority of 458 lot factory loads shoot either 500 grain or 550 grain bullets. 
On the other hand, 458 Win Mag factory ammo is normally offered with 325 to 500 grain bullets. 500 grain bullets are very popular for that cartridge, but 400 grain and 450 grain factory loads are not uncommon either. Though I'm not aware of any 480 grain factory loads, that is another good option for hand loaders. Now, unfortunately, this is an area where the 458 Winchester Magnum is hampered by limited case capacity. That small package has only so much space to go around, and there's simply not enough room to, to achieve acceptable velocities with heavier bullets, especially with rifles that have shorter barrels. This is especially true with monolithic bullets like the Barnes TSX that have a longer overall length than lead core bullets of the same weight. That's why the Barnes factory load for the 458 Win Mang uses a 450 grain bullet and the Barnes 458 Lot factory load uses a 500 grain bullet. As we've talked about before, sectional density is a measure of the ratio of the diameter of a projectile to its mass. All other things being equal, a heavier projectile of a given caliber will be longer and therefore have a higher sectional density and consequently penetrate deeper than projectiles with a lower mass and lower sectional density. A 550 grain 458 caliber bullet has a sectional density of 0.375. A 500 grain 458 caliber bullet has a sectional density of 341. A 480 grain bullet of that caliber has a sectional density of 0.327. And a 450 grain 458 caliber bullet has a sectional density of 0.306. Now, the good news is that even that 450 grain bullet still meets Kevin Robertson's recommended sectional density of 300 for hunting Cape Buffalo. Now, that being said, there is clearly a gigantic difference between those 500 and 550 grain bullets used by the 458 lot and the lighter bullets the 458 Win Mag is sometimes restricted to. Now, while kinetic energy is an important factor in evaluating the suitability of a particular cartridge or load for hunting, kinetic energy is weighted towards higher velocity projectiles. Especially when hunting dangerous game, bullet momentum is also a very important characteristic. Calculated by simply multiplying bullet weight in grains by muzzle velocity, then dividing by 7,000, bullet momentum is important for evaluating how suitable a given load is for deep, straight-line penetration. Put simply, a bullet with more momentum will be harder to stop than a bullet with less momentum, all other things being equal, of course. Now, since it can fire heavier bullets and achieve higher velocities than the 458 Win Mag, the 458 lot has an advantage in this area as well. For instance, a 458 Win Mag load firing a 450 grain bullet at 2,240 feet per second has a momentum value of 144 foot pounds per second. A 500 grain bullet at 2,050 feet per second has a momentum value of 146 foot pounds per second. And a 500 grain bullet at 2,150 feet per second has a momentum value of 153 foot pounds per second. On the other hand, 458 lot loads of a 500 grain bullet at 2,300 feet per second and a 550 grain bullet at 2,100 feet per second have momentum values of 164 and 165 foot-pounds per second, respectively. Now, all of these loads exceed Kevin Robertson's minimum recommended momentum value of 95 foot-pounds per second with plenty of room to spare, but the 458 lot does have a definite advantage in this area as well. So where do we stand with each cartridge? The 458 Winchester Magnum has a smaller case than the 458 lot and therefore has a lower ceiling on its maximum performance. In that same vein, the 458 Winchester is generally better suited to using lighter weight bullets with a lower sectional density. When shooting the same weight bullets as the 458 lot, the 458 Win Mag shoots them at a slower velocity. Even so, the 458 Winchester Magnum is still a very powerful cartridge and is more than powerful enough to quickly and ethically kill any species of big game on this planet. Additionally, though it does have a very stout recoil itself, the 458 Win Mag has a noticeable advantage over the 458 Lot in this area as well. On the other hand, the 458 Lot uses a larger case that provides more flexibility and has a higher ceiling on its maximum performance than is the case with the 458 Winchester Magnum. For instance, while it's possible for the 458 Win Mag to shoot a 500 grain bullet at 2,150 feet per second with modern powder, the cartridge is basically maxed out at that point. 
However, the 458 lot is easily capable of that sort of performance and more, and it can use heavier bullets and or shoot them at a faster velocity than the 458 Win Mag is capable of. For this reason, many 458 lot loads use bullets with a higher sectional density and carry more energy and momentum downrange than the 458 Win Mag. The 458 lot is also an extremely powerful and hard-hitting cartridge that is easily capable of taking down any species, species of game on Earth with good shot placement. Like we just discussed, though, that extra power comes at the expense of more recoil. Do not underestimate the impact that recoil has on an, the ability of a person to shoot accurately either. Regardless of how well a given person handles recoil, all other things being equal, they will absolutely shoot better with a milder recoil. Any professional hunter or guide outfitting hunts anywhere in the world from North American big game like brown bear to African game like Cape Buffalo would prefer a well-placed shot from a 458 Win Mag over a poorly placed shot from a 458 lot. Indeed, many hunters who use the 458 lot will intentionally download the cartridge to 458 Win Mag levels to reduce recoil. This brings us full circle to the reason why the 458 lot exists in the first place. The desire for a cartridge that can reliably shoot a 500 grain 458 caliber bullet at 2,150 feet per second under realistic conditions. There's nothing magical about that sort of performance though. Sure, it's great for killing buffalo and elephant, but so is a 480 grain bullet at 2,200 feet per second or a 500 grain bullet at 2,050 feet per second. All of those loads meet or exceed the performance of several very popular and effective 450 Nitro loads from decades prior. Winchester's marketing was one of the biggest reasons why hunters fixated on a 500 grain bullet at 2,150 feet per second. Had Winchester from the very beginning used a longer case that was actually capable of delivering that sort of performance in the real world? Or had they established more realistic performance objectives for the shorter case from the beginning, hunters very likely would not have encountered problems with squib loads and there would have been no reason to develop improved cartridges like the 458 lot. Like I previously stated, once Winchester fixed the initial issues with the 458 Winchester Magnum, it became a very effective and reliable cartridge for use on thick-skinned dangerous game. This is a very important point that often gets lost or overlooked in the 458 Win Mag versus 458 lot debate. Yes, the 458 lot was developed to solve a real problem that existed decades ago, and yes, it is more powerful than modern factory 458 Win Mag ammunition. However, it's not clear that all that extra energy actually translates into improved killing power in the real world, and it also comes with a lot of extra recoil. Now let's talk about 458 lot and 458 Win Mag ammo. Now, since both cartridges are intended for a specific niche in the hunting community, neither is extremely popular in absolute terms, and they cannot hold a candle to the popularity of cartridges like the 270 Winchester or the 30 6 That said, both are pretty common choices among hunters pursuing dangerous game who need a heavy-hitting rifle. For that reason, several of the big ammunition manufacturers who cater to those sort of hunters do manufacture ammunition for both cartridges. Most notably, this list includes Barnes with their Vortex Safari line, loaded with TSX bullets, Federal Premium with their Cape Shock line, loaded with Trophy Bonded Bear Claw and Sledgehammer, Swift A-Frame and Woodley Hydro Solid bullets, Hornady with their Dangerous Game line, loaded with DGX Bonded and DGS Solid bullets, Norma with their African PH line, loaded with Woodley Full Metal Jacket and Soft Nose bullets, Nosler with their Safari line, loaded with Partition and Safari Solid bullets, and Swift, loaded with their A-Frame and Breakaway Solid bullets. While ammunition for both cartridges is usually much more expensive than smaller bore centerfire rifle hunting ammo, 458 Win Mag ammo is generally moderately cheaper than 458 Lot ammo. That said, factory ammo for both cartridges typically costs $100 to $200 for a box of 20 since both cartridges are used by a relatively small segment of the hunting world, not every sporting goods store keeps 458 lot or 458 Win Mag ammo in stock. The 458 Win Mag is usually a little bit more common, but a store that carries one of those cartridges usually keeps the other in stock as well. 
most of the big retailers in the USA will usually have a couple boxes of each on hand, but outside of places like Alaska, and often not even there, it would be extremely unusual to find 458 Winchester or 458 lot ammo at a Walmart or at a smaller gun store. Now, this difference is even more apparent in places like Africa, where 458 Win Mag factory ammo is quite often significantly more common and less expensive than 458 lot factory ammo. Now, availability of ammunition is usually pretty good online, though, and the bigger retailers typically have a good selection of quality factory ammo for both cartridges and stock. Now, fortunately, reloading components for both cartridges are also widely available. The high price of factory ammo and the difficulty involved with obtaining a reliable supply of ammo at times makes both cartridges very popular among handloaders. Now, both cartridges also offer a fair bit of options for handloaders. For instance, hunters having trouble reaching desired velocities with the 458 Winchester Magnum with a 500 grain bullet can drop down to a 450 grain or a 480 grain bullet. On the other hand, hunters who don't like the recoil of the 458 lot with a full-powered factory load can download the cartridge slightly to achieve more modest performance on par with the 458 Win Mag. Now, both the 458 lot and 458 Winchester Magnum shoot the extremely popular .458 inch bullet size that's also used by stuff like the 458 SOCOM, the 4570 Government, the 450 Marlin, and the 460 Weatherby Magnum. Fortunately, there are a bunch of outstanding quality 4.58 caliber bullets suitable for use on dangerous game that reloaders can choose from. Just about all of those bullets previously mentioned as available in factory ammunition are also usually available as component bullets as well. Now let's talk about rifles for each cartridge. Now the rifle situation is very similar to the ammo situation with them. There are a handful of options for each one, and there's also quite a bit of overlap in the rifles available in each chambering. 458 Win Mag rifles in current production include the Winchester Model 70, the CZ 550, and the Blosser R8. Of these, the CZ 550 and the Blosser are also available in 458 lot. At the same time, the Kimber Caprivi is also an option for a current production 458 lot rifle. Though Ruger does not manufacture any rifles in either cartridge at this time, both were available from Ruger at one time in their single shot number one tropical and bolt action M77 rifles. The same goes for the Remington 700, the Weatherby Mark V dangerous game rifle, and the Browning Safari bolt action rifles. There are also a fair number of rifles out there that started out as a 458 Winchester Magnum, but have been converted to 458 lot at some point as well. So while the selection of rifles available for each cartridge is relatively small, hunters do have some very good quality rifles to choose from when selecting a rifle for a dangerous game hunt. In particular, the CZ 550 is a very popular option. Now, as a side note, Winchester initially offered the 458 Win Mag in their Model 70 rifle when they first rolled out the cartridge in 1956. So, there are a small number of pre-64 Model 70 rifles out there, chambered in 458 Winchester Magnum, that are prized by collectors due to their relative scarcity. So, which cartridge is right for you? Do you need a cartridge ideally suited for hunting dangerous game like grizzly bear, cape buffalo, water buffalo, or elephant? With modern factory ammunition, both cartridges are excellent choices with proven reputations of field. I personally lean towards the 458 Win Mag, but I do understand why other people might go with the 458 lot. Are you a hunter who needs to wring out all the performance you possibly can from a 45 caliber rifle? Professional hunters in Africa who guide dangerous game hunts are the first group of people who come to mind in this category for me. In episode 103, Kevin Robertson stated that his ideal dangerous game rifle will shoot a 500 grain 458 caliber bullet at 2,100 feet per second at a minimum. Those figures are close to the upper limit of real world 458 Win Mag performance, but they are easily obtained with the 458 lot. This is not the sort of performance that the average hunter who wants to hunt buffalo once or even a handful of times needs. But people putting their lives on the line multiple times a year, every year, guiding buffalo hunts really do need that sort of performance. In this situation, it does make sense to use the 458 lot. 
The 458 Winchester is an acceptable choice, but the ability to use those heavier 550 grain bullets and to get that extra bit of muzzle velocity are factors in favor of the 458 lot, which is why it is so darn popular with African PHs and hunting guides outfitting dangerous game hunts elsewhere in the world. Now, what if you're a hand loader? Both cartridges are good choices for hand loaders. That said, the 458 lot does offer a bit more room to tailor loads to your exact specifications. Now, at the same time, hand loaders can also tweak 458 wind mag loads, usually by using lighter bullets for better performances in some cases if they're not obtaining the results they want out of their particular rifle. But at the same time, like I previously said, if you're hand loading the 458 lot and it's just a little bit too much recoil for you, you can drop those loads down a little bit so they're a little bit less powerful and have less recoil. Now in that same line of thought, are you a hunter who does a lot of hand loading but you don't always have access to first rate powder? While modern powders have dramatically improved the performance of the 458 Win Mag, not everybody always has access to those powders. In those cases, the 458 lot is certainly a better choice as that extra case capacity is even more important with lower quality powder. This is yet another reason why the 458 lot is so darn popular with African professional hunters. Now what if you're sensitive to recoil though? Now while the 458 Winchester Magnum has a pretty stout recoil itself, the 458 lot has considerably more. So if the 458 Win Mag is still too much to handle though, it's probably a good idea to move down to something that doesn't recoil quite so much. Now all things considered, the 458 Winchester Magnum and 458 Lot are both outstanding dangerous game cartridges. You need to carefully analyze your potential needs and choose the one that you think will fit them best. Now like I mentioned earlier, I personally use a 458 Win Mag and here's why. Even a 458 Win Mag shooting a 480 grain bullet at 2200 feet per second or a 500 grain bullet at 2050 feet per second is a whole lot more powerful than the 9.3 by 62 millimeter Mauser I shot my first Buffalo with. Now I have shot that rifle in 458 Win Mag a lot and I have determined that it is right at the upper edge of what I can handle as far as recoil goes and still shoot accurately. I'm not a professional hunter myself, and I don't do a lot of Cape Buffalo hunting. So I personally don't feel like I need that extra 200 feet per second of muzzle velocity that I can get with a 458 lot. So anyway, your personal needs and desires may vary, but that is why I personally go with the 458 Win Mag. Now, if you enjoyed this video, then please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Just hit that red subscribe button below to make sure that you don't miss out on any of my new videos on hunting gear reviews, cartridge comparisons, and more. Now, for more detailed information on the 458 Win Mag and the 458 Lot and how they compare to other popular hunting cartridges, click on the link in the description below or go to huntingguns101.com to get a free ebook I have written on some of the best hunting calibers. Now, I'm going to turn it over to you guys. What cartridge do you prefer? The 458 Win Mag or the 458 Lot? What game have you successfully taken with them? Let me know by leaving a comment on this video right now. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and good hunting.